So lately I've been doing a lot of wiring for different projects like custom 3D printers, control panels, and other random devices. And naturally this means that I'm gonna be doing a lot of crimping of various terminals such as JST, DuPont, Molex, and so on. Crimping tools made specifically for certain brands and series of connectors and terminals can get very expensive, on the order of hundreds of dollars. Now these are certainly worth it if you're crimping hundreds of the same style of terminal every day, but if you're a hobbyist, it's a hefty price to pay to crimp the occasional terminal. Now there are cheaper alternatives online, like this ratcheting style crimper here that is pretty widely recommended. Uh, I've seen it on forums and all sorts of other YouTube videos. And this one I got off Amazon, but I really actually don't recommend this because I find that it over crimps a lot of terminals and it's supposed to be good for JST, DuPont, Molex, pretty much the whole gamut. But yeah, I just find that it over crimps and crushes the terminal and doesn't really do a great job. So this brings me to the tool that I do recommend, which is this guy here. And I found it at my local Princess Auto, which is essentially the Canadian equivalent of Harbor Freight. And it was about 30 bucks. Now I did do some searching online and I found something very similar to this on Amazon. So I'll put that link in the video description down below. And so in my opinion, this does make the best crimped connections. Now, the only drawback to this is that it is a little bit slow, but it is the simplest tool and it is one of the cheapest that you'll find. So for making the occasional connector, it works just fine. So let's take a closer look at this tool and figure out how we can use it and how we can avoid messing up our crimps. So removing the lock here, you can see down at the bottom, it does say micro crimp, and it comes with a variety of dies here. So everything from one, 1.4, 1.6, and 1.9 millimeters for various style connectors. Looking at the cross section of the die, comparing it to the ratcheting style die, you'll notice that this one here is a lot thinner. And that is because the ratcheting style crimper is supposed to crimp the section that crimps down on the wire insulator as well as the bare wire at the same time. This style here will only do one section at a time. So you actually have to crimp twice for one terminal. And so you'll be crimping your section of the terminal that clamps down on the wire insulator first, and then you can go ahead and move on to the second part of the terminal that clamps down onto the bare wire and you do that second. And so although this is slower, this is also the reason why it works much better because in this style of a crimper, you only have one choice. You can only take the one die and you have to squeeze both sections of the terminal into the die of that one single measurement. Whereas this one gives you the versatility of taking your terminal and applying the different size dies to the different sections of the terminal. So you get the perfect crimp in both sections unlike this one, which tends to just crush it. So what I'll do now is I'll demonstrate the tools on these pretty popular JST XH style connectors. So these are the two and a half millimeter pitch style connectors, like I said, which are pretty popular and they come with very tiny terminals here. Now these terminals have two portions to them. The portion right here on the end with these taller wings, as I like to call them, that is supposed to crimp down on the wire insulator. And then there's a shorter section just ahead of it. And that is supposed to crimp down onto the bare wire. So go ahead, I've gone ahead and I've prepped a piece of wire here. So I've stripped that down. And the idea being that you just insert it like this. And I'm first gonna use the ratcheting style uh, crimpers. And we're going to give that a go and see how it turns out. And so I'm gonna try and very carefully modulate the amount of pressure that I'm applying using this ratcheting style crimp tool. But in the end, what you'll see here is a total failure of the crimp. So as soon as I release this and I go to touch the section that crimps down or clamps down onto the wire insulator, you'll see a part of it crumble off and it has been over crimped despite my efforts to be careful. And I think this is largely due to the fact uh, that like I had mentioned before, this tool has to crimp both the insulator section and the bare wire portion at the same time. And so this is not a one size fits all solution. Now, before we go ahead and use the other crimping tool, the one thing I wanna point out here as well is that these longer wings might be part of the problem. Now I'm using these Chinese knockoffs, whereas I don't know if authentic GST terminals have these very long style wings here that are meant to grab onto the wire insulator but I've noticed that I've had a lot more success. If I just take a pair of side cutters and trim these down just a touch. 
and now I trim them down almost to be in line with the section of the terminal here that's meant to crimp down onto the bare wire. And this gives me a much higher chance of success, pretty much 100% with this style of tool. And with the ratcheting tool, it's about 75, 25, where three quarters of the time I get a proper crimp, where maybe a quarter of the time it still fails. But we'll see with this style of crimping tool, how well it works when I just make that tiny little modification. And I suggest that you guys make that modification as well and we'll get a nice clean crimp. So let's go ahead and do this one now. So I got a fresh piece of wire, strip some of the insulator off the end, and I'm using this terminal that we clipped those little wings. And with my fingers, I've just pinched those wings ever so slightly onto the wire insulator in order to hold it into place while I maneuver this on camera. If you're not doing this on camera, you typically wouldn't need to do that as you could probably balance the terminal inside of the crimping tool and do it all at once. But for the purpose of this video, it makes my life a lot easier. So I'm gonna grab the uh, 1.6 millimeter die. I'm gonna get that centered over top of the wings there that are going to be crimping down on top of the wire insulator. So you can see them in the jaws and I'm going to lightly crimp down. You don't have to overdo it. Just lightly crimp down. If you overdo it, sometimes it gets a little bit stuck in there. But otherwise, you can see, once this comes into focus, how nice of a crimp on the jacket that is. And that's solid. That's not coming off. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the bare wire portion has not been completed yet. And so I'm going to come back with the same 1.6 millimeter die for the bare portion of that terminal. I'm going to get it centered in there and same thing. I'm going to give it a light crimp and that's actually perfect. And so if you take a very close look, that's a very nice crimp. So if you guys pick up one of these tools, you definitely also want to pick up extra terminals for your project. That's definitely a must as well as some extra wire so you can practice your crimping before working on your actual project. You want to get a feel for your tool, see how much pressure is required to over crimp and under crimp because you want to be able to pull on those connections with a reasonable amount of force and not have the terminal come loose and come off because if you're plugging and unplugging your connectors, you don't want to separate the wires from the terminals. Otherwise, you're obviously going to have a loose connection. And so that's pretty much it for this video. I just really wanted to share with you guys my experience with these crimping tools, as well as that tiny little trick of clipping off that section of the terminal that clamps onto the wire insulator. And that way you guys get the perfect crimp every time and a nice secure connection for all of your projects. Thanks for watching, guys.